So I have started. Yeah, I'll come to you. Yeah, Subhu, if you have joined only today and have you received yesterday's video or you have not received yesterday's video? No? Okay, then probably you have registered for today. What I'll do is I'll send out yesterday's video as well to you. And I have a question. Abdul Abdul Aziz, you have a question that what steps do you need for test? So so far, as I was telling you, today, so far whatever we are doing, this is required for tester as well as for developer. When we go in details, I will tell you from when you need a test. Like these are all for testing. This is for development. Okay. I'll tell you when we reach to that point. So far. Uh, everything is required for both tester and developer. Okay, so let's do a quick recap of yesterday what we have done. Yesterday we have, have, have got the basic idea about what ETL is all about. Out, uh, we got a basic idea about why ETL is required. We got a very basic idea about what is data warehouse or data mart. And then we got a look and feel of Informatica, which is a ETL tool. We we imported the source structure from an existing file or sample file. And we created a target structure. This is a, this is my target structure. So we created this target structure from uh, from scratch, and we created this source structure from. Uh, File. So we imported the structure from a file. Okay, this is what we have done. Also, I have sent out the videos, uh, video of yesterday's class, and also the complete course content. So, in case if you have not received the course content from me, then feel free to uh, uh, like in the, feel free to let me know in the chat window. I'll send you today again. And also, I'll send out the video for today's class. Now, I want to tell a little bit more about the actual class. I'm planning to start the class from next Tuesday, most likely next Tuesday or Wednesday, but most likely it's Tuesday. And um, so, in the class, uh, the class curriculum is something like this. What we do is we do the installation of the software in your system. So, you will have the software, full version of the software. And every day when I take the class, we record the session and I send out the recording immediately after the class, the way I have done yesterday. So, and then I give you a lot of assignments. These assignments, um, uh, if you can do the assignments, then you shouldn't feel, uh, you shouldn't, shouldn't have any difficulty when you go to the, go to actual project. Uh, also, what I do is, um, so you will get the assignments, you get the videos, and um, at the end of the course, I try to help people for building the resumes and also help them to get a job. So this is the complete it, um, training, end-to-end -end training. And let's say you took this training and then some point of time you feel that, okay, I need, need to know a lot of concepts again. Or maybe you, you took the training and you took a break of two to three months and then you want to um, um, you are learning from the beginning again and to search for a job, you can take the training again for free, okay? So this is more or less about the training. Now let's go back to the session. So oh, we have, now we have the source structure. This is my source structure and this is my target structure. And I have a very simple business logic read the data from my source file and load the data. I will actually load employee ID as is from the source, department ID as is from the source. But for the full name, what I'm gonna do is I will concatenate the first name and last name and generate the full name. Generate the full name for my target. 
So this is a very simple business requirement and this is what I'm trying to do today. We have seen the source analyzer, how source analyzer was, we have seen how the target designer was. And this is your mapping designer. Okay. The third one um, where we will work today, the workspace is called mapping designer. And this is the place where you actually create the mapping between the source and the target. Okay. So you go here and then do a create and then you create the mapping that's a M. Usually the naming convention for mapping is M underscore and then you give the name which I give employee underscore or FS. Okay. So as soon as you create the mapping, you see in the left hand side the subfolder, mapping subfolder, you can see the mapping created. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to create the source to target mapping. So my source is this one is my source. Employees is my source. I'll drag and drop into the mapping designer. So as soon as you drag and drop, you see here that this, let me do this, iconize. Okay, so you see here, this is your source, and this is your source qualifier. The source qualifier is another transformation, but which comes usually by, not usually, most of the 95% of the time by default with your source, um, uh, source file, like source, uh, whenever you drag and drop your source, the source qualifier comes by default. This is a very, very important transformation. In the course, we will go in very details about this transformation, but right now, just uh, consider that this transformation comes by default with your source. Now, I am gonna create another transformation, which is called your expression transformation. Go to transformations, do create, and from the drop-down list, you select the expression, and then you give a name to it, exp underscore, let's say, employee. P L O Y V. Okay. Now, expression transformation is used to basically do, um, I, I would say, the uh, calculations, data modifications, this kind of job. So, right now, um, the columns which I need in my target, let's bring the target also. So I'll drag and drop the target. So if you see here, the columns which is required in my target is employee ID. So I will drag the employee ID from my source qualifier into my expression and from expression into my target. And then I have department ID which is also straightforward. So department ID, department ID. But my full name is a concatenation of my first name and last name. So what I'm going to do is I will drag and drop the first name and drag and drop the last name. But I cannot connect the first name and last name as is to my target because I have to concatenate it. So let's double click the expression transformation. In the expression, let's understand a few things here. In the expression transformation, you see here, these are called ports, okay? These are called all your ports. So each port is identified either I, O, or V. So I stands for input, O stands for output, and V stands for variable. So if you look here, my employee ID, this is more of an input-output port because I'm getting the input from the previous transformation, and, I, and I'm just passing the same value to the next transformation. Same with your department ID. I'm getting the value from the previous transformation and I'm passing the value to the next transformation. So this is also input output port. But look at the first name and last name. These values are not a straight pool. I just cannot connect it to the target. So these are basically, I am taking the input value from, uh, from my previous transformation, the first name and last name. Then what I have to do is, um, um, internally I have to do calculate the la uh, full name and I can populate the full name to the next transformation. So what I'm going to do is, for the first name and last name, I will make it as input port only because I, I cannot connect them directly. So if I do this, as soon as I do this, you see here this small arrow at the right hand side disappear. Okay, that tells me that 
first name and last name are input port only. Now, what I'm going to do is I will create an output port. So you click this button and create a port and name it as full underscore name and make the data type as 30. The data type is string, length as 30. And make this one as output port. Okay, make this as output port. Click OK. So you see here now, you see here, uh, this first name and last name are input port, and full name is your output port. So I will see, I will calculate the full name in this port, and I will connect it to the target. So how do I do this calculation? So you click, so this is your expression window where you click, it opens up an expression window where you have to do all the calculations. What I think. Okay. Now, here you write all your formulas. So here, uh, in this expression window, I'll go to ports and I have to concatenate the first name and last name. So double click on the first name. And for concatenation, we use double five. So double five. And I want to put a space between first name and last name. So you put space in single quotes and double five and then last name. So what I'm doing here is I will take the first name and concatenate a space to it and then concatenate the last name. So first name, space, last name. That's what I want in my target. Click OK, apply, OK. Done. You connect this full name port to the target. So your mapping looks something like this. Okay. And then once done, save it, control S. Okay, any questions so far? Anyone, any questions? This is called your mapping. So as I was telling yesterday, is this one is very similar to your um, the planning of a trip or a vacation. So you are planning for a vacation, and right now you have not done any, you have not booked your flights, but what a very clear picture that you want to take a vacation of 10 days from such and such day to what is your start date, what is your end date, and what are the different places you will go, or um, um, when you are planning to take the uh, uh, rental, what are the different hotels you will stay. So you have a complete, very good plan, but you have not done. Uh, working. So this is exactly what your design. So this is your mapping, which tells you that this is um, this. If I give you this mapping, in, you can that what is the mapping between your source A is map between source and target. I got few questions. Let me answer them one by one. Okay, uh, Munir has a question. I understand IO, what is VG, a variable port. Um, I'm, I'm not going to cover the variable port in this pre session, but usually variable ports are the temporary ports where these calculations, and you can use it in multiple ports. So that's your variable port. But that is covered in the actual uh, course. Um, Abdulaziz has a question. Usually we move all data from source to target. And no, not really. It depends upon your business logic. So what I want to do is maybe I am reading all the data. So I have a data where a data is of Walmart. But I want to particularly, and then it, it has the data from all the stores and all the um, all the products, but about this, the electronics or any product which is actually um, tagged as um, high price product. So I want to check like, how was the uh, sales last year based on that, or maybe last two or three years based on the hype, and based on that, I want to make the inventory for this year. So you can filter the data. Okay, there are transformations which can filter the data. 
answer the question, Aziz? Okay. Uh, so we have a question of how the map will be used and ETL job. So this is your ETL. Okay. We will with this mapping, you will understand how it's reading data and how it's operating data. Okay, Subhu? So any other question, anyone? No? So this part, our design is complete. I have a mapping which tells me in the logic. So the logic is implemented, how the data would be transformed between source to target. That particular logic is already implemented here. Now, my next job is to create a workflow. How do I create a workflow? You select this mapping, right click the mapping, say generate workflow. And at this point, I'll just do next, next. Okay. Once you have created the mapping, the next step is you have to go to the workflow manager. So I'll click to the W, which is my workflow manager. And you will see a workflow is created there. And this is my previous workflow. And this is today. So I will delete this one. This is the previous one. Okay. This is my today's workflow. So in the in the workflow manager also you have multiple workspace like task developer, workflow designer, and workflow designer. So right now we will only work in the workflow designer. So you drag and drop the workflow in the workflow designer. This is how your workflow looks like. Okay. Now this this complete set with this arrow and this guy together called as a workflow. And this particular guy is called as a session. Okay, so if you double click the session, it tells you what is the underlying mapping. So a map, a, a session is always connected to a mapping. So basically, you build a session on the top of a mapping. You have, if you do not have a mapping, you cannot build a session. Okay. Now I'll go to this tab, mapping tab, and now I have to tell Informatica that. Where is my actual data file? If you remember, in the uh, in the uh, in the designer, I have not told, told Informatica that where is my data file because for the design, I don't care about the data file. Even I have not told told Informatica that where I want to generate my output file because I don't care while doing the design. But if I am doing um, uh, in the workflow manager. Because this is the step where you do the actual bookings of your flight, it, a hotel, rental, and everything. So you have to tell Informatica that where exactly your file exists, or uh, what is the path of your file, source file, and where you want to generate your target file. So you go to this one, source qualifier, and then here it tells you source file directory. I'll tell my source file directory is C S R C file. This is my source file directory and my file name is employees.txt. Where do I want to create my target file? So you click here on the targets. This is my target. And I want to create my target file in the directory C T G T files. This I want to create it okay. PGT file. This is where I want to create my target file. Okay. And I'm oh, sorry, this is a reject. I, I, I did. Okay. This is where I have to write C and PGT files. This is where I want to create my target file. And my output file name would be, let's say, employees underscore uh, FF dot TXT. Also, I want to see a header. <clears throat> And the header in my file, okay? So I'll put the header options, I'll select here as output field names. You say apply. 
Now, if you remember, what we have done is our source file is a comma delimited file, but our target file is a, mm, a fixed width file. Okay. So now that once this is done, we have provided all the information about the source and the target. You save it. Control S. And once this is done, now your workflow is actually ready to run. That means you have done all your bookings, everything is done. Now you are ready for your vacation. So when I run it, that's your vacation, okay? Now, um, uh, when I run it, the expectation is, let's just understand and the expectation first before I run it. So the expectation is I, um, I should see a file generated in PGT a, if uh, C underscore T, TGT files folder under C, e, and when I look into that file, I should be able to see employee ID, e, full name, and department ID. Okay, that's the uh, purpose of my workflow. Let's double right click. Let me do one thing. Let's click on this workflow monitor. When you click, uh, workflow monitor is a place where you can see how your workflow is running. Okay, so you right click here and do start workflow. And go to the workflow man monitor. You will see on the free session this workflow is running. So you right click on the session and say get run properties. And you go to source target statistics. This will tell you well, how many records are there in your source and how many of them are read and how many of them are populated in your target. Okay. See, um, it tells me that this is a source qualifier. There are 107 records in my source. All of them has, is read and 107 records is loaded in my target. Okay, this is my target. Now let's go to my C uh, TGT files under C drive and see if really I got that file or not. I'm sorry, not this TRC. TGT files. See, this is what is populated now, which is today. And I double click this. Okay. Now if you look here, uh, it is actually um, because it's a fixed width file. So what happens with the fixed width file is let me tell you now. So you know, let's go back to this data is not uh, it's correct. It's not wrong, but I want I don't want it in this way. I want it in a different way. So in a fixed width file, what happens is you have assigned three e characters for the first column, which is employee ID. So that's why it has populated only three characters and the rest is, uh, all the rest of the things are truncated. For full name, we have assigned and, you know, 30 characters. So you see here, it has actually reserved the 30 characters for full name. Whether it's populated, it's not populated, it doesn't matter, but it has reserved. For department ID also, it has reserved 10 characters. That's why you don't see underscore ID because this name itself is more than 10 characters. Right. So what I'm going to do is to so data is correct, but to increase the look and feel, what I'm going to do is I'll increase the size of each field so that I can have a better look and feel of the data. So let's say do this and save it. So I have increased the size of the employee ID and department ID. I cannot increase the size in the mapping. Okay. These are all disabled. If I have to increase the size, I have to go to the target designer because this is, I'm increasing the size in the target. So once this is done, and you save it, and you have to go to your station. Now, this is what you have to understand. You have done some changes in the underlying mapping. So station is associated with the mapping, and you have done some changes to the mapping. So you have to refresh those changes into the station. You right click here and do a refresh mapping. I think it's already refreshed. Okay. Um, yeah. Now let's do I think it's refreshed. No save. Okay. Now let's just run it one more time and see.
Okay. Now let's go here and look at the data. Okay, now it looks better, right? Okay, any question anyone so far? This is a very, very simple mapping. Any questions, anyone so far? No questions? Okay. One thing I want to tell you here is people who are actually planning for ETL testing. Now, why, why I tell you this, this, uh, this first part, uh, yeah, how to create, uh, how to import a uh, source structure, how to create a uh, target structure. These things you have to know, okay? But, and then also it's good to know how to create a mapping. But in real life, you do not have to create any mapping, whether it's simple or complex. You do not have to, okay? In, uh, if you are going for testing, you do not have to. But for the first one, the simple one, I usually would, uh, suggest to, the, to my students, even though you are testing, at least do one, one simple mapping in uh, hands-on so that you know how it is created. But in a project, you do not have to create any mapping. Even you do not have to create the workflow of the patient. But what you have to do is you have to run the workflow and then you have to see, okay, uh, when I run the work, so I should see here 107 rows read, 107 rows loaded. None of the records are rejected. If my records are rejected, then why they are rejected? That's your job. You have to find out why they are rejected. If my mapping is, let's say for example, okay, let's say I just change this, and the source one, I change the source file name as underscore one, two, three, and save and run. See, it's failing. So if it is failing, now it's your job to find out why it's failing. So it's clear, very clearly saying that this, this particular the system cannot find the file. If, if it fails for a very clear reason, which you can find it from here, then you send this back to the developer saying that, okay, this is this particular workflow is failing for such and such a reason, you fix it, okay? He fixes it and then you run it when the data is populated. You, first thing you have to check is in this workflow monitor if anything is rejected or not. If rejected, you have to find out the reason why. If not rejected, then you are good. Next job is you go to the uh, if it's a file, the output is a file, then you go to the file and then you validate the data, if the data is correctly populated or not. That's your ETL testing job. You do not have to create a source, target, or a mapping, or a workflow. But what I tell people that, let's say you, you, are, uh, let's say you are working on a workflow and you found the data is not working populated correctly. For example, let's say for this one, um, I have not written in this logic correctly, okay? Um, let's say I, I forgot to put the space in between first name and last name. Let's do this, okay? So I forgot to put the uh, first name, uh, space between first name and last name, and I just created the mapping. I'll go to the mapping, change the path again. So right now, what I'm doing is, I'll, I'll show you how the how, if you're a tester, what's what's your responsibility and how we have to do it. Okay. So so this is the mapping, and this is handed over to a tester. Now, as a tester, what you do is, you first thing you run the workflow. You go to the session. Uh, go to the workflow monitor, see if any records rejected. No, none of the records rejected, everything good, went good, fine. Now you go to the file. When you look to the actual file, you see there is no space in between. Now if you don't see any space in between, you have to now go into the, sometimes you have to go into the mapping and you have to see why it's missing. Now if you don't know how this expression transformation works, 
you will not be able to figure out what is the problem. So, but if you know, know how the expression transformation works, you go here and you see, fine, okay, this is where you are doing the first name, last name concatenation, and you are actually missing a space. So you you send this back to the developer. You don't fix it. You just send this back to the developer, and developer fixes it. So the whole idea is, uh, if you are looking for testing, if you are testing job, then you have to know the functionality of all the uh, all the transformations. You have to know how does a, a source looks like, how does a target looks like, how does a mapping looks like, like uh, what exactly a expression does. But you do not have to create a mapping or create any of these in real life. Okay. Any questions on this? I see some questions. Oh, let me answer them. Um, but in the meantime, if you have a question, just uh, send me this. Uh, are this uh, does that answer this question? Do you have any uh, idea uh, what is the each year job responsibility? So far we are good. Yes, no, maybe. Okay. So um uh, so okay, so um yeah, so from a testing standpoint we will uh, uh, i'll tell you how much is required in each step okay whenever we learn a new, new transformation i will tell you okay if you're looking for a testing job because the responsibility of testing is you don't generate create the workflow okay you just what you do is you run the workflow and make sure like there are a lot of other uh, responsibility but one of the basic is the workflow and make sure the data is transformed correctly. That's one. And data, even if it's transformed correctly. Okay, these are the two things you have to make sure as a, uh, there are other things, but basic two things is these two. You don't create any of these. Okay, uh, I think, um, I, I, I think this is, this is, I, I'll keep this much for the free session because I don't want uh, another concept because that will take more time. Keep the forum open for any kind of questions. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Expect an email from me. I will send out the um, uh, send out the course content to everyone again because it's very difficult for me to figure out who didn't get it is to everyone. Okay. If you if you get it twice, just uh, I will send out the recording session, so today's recording session and also yesterday's session to everyone. So anyone who has no yesterday's session, but uh, if you are interested for today's session, just watch today's so this is what we have in today's three things. I want to tell all that this. I I hope you have a, a very basic idea about this tool. This is very easy tool to learn. I don't write codes. It's all drag and drop. Only thing you have to understand that and the job market for ETL is real good right now. Um, yeah, and there's an intro in, so job market of ETL is real good and informatics widely used ETL too. So learning informatics gives you the opportunity of getting a job soon. Okay, then thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for uh, taking time to attend this session. Uh, and I would definitely like to see some of you in my